Oh, one comes in, out of the gate swinging, a lot of acidity. Woo! I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. Chardonnay is the most widely planted grape in America, red or white. Around 10% of all America's vineyards are covered with Chardonnay. And considering the fact that America is the fourth largest producer of wine in the world, that's a lot of Chardonnay. Chardonnay's homeland is Burgundy. Some of the greatest examples of the grape in the world are Burgundy. But the grape is well-traveled. It it's went all over the world, and producers try their hand at crafting great Chardonnay. A lot of the general wine drinking population population in America think of Chardonnay as having this kind of generic or, or uniform flavor when in essence Chardonnay is a pretty neutral grape variety. It's also dubbed the winemaker's grape. It's fairly neutral. It's actually medium acidity and medium in body but depending on how you make the wine, if you barrel ferment it, if you use lees contact, the growing conditions, you can change the flavor immensely. Maybe that's why the monks in Burgundy identify it as a great grape to really express terroir. America's big break when it came to Chardonnay is in the 19th 1976 Judgment of Paris when in 1973 Chateau Montalena Chardonnay beat out a bunch of great white burgundies in the Judgment of Paris. In the middle of last year I released a big Chardonnay blind tasting where I had a burgundy, I had Chardonnays from all over the world, all premium Chardonnays, and that was a real fun tasting. But today it's an American Chardonnay showdown. I have four of my favorite regions. I have one Chardonnay from Willamette, Oregon. I have one from Sonoma in California, one from Santa Barbara County in California, and one from Napa Valley in California. Chardonnay can really be difficult to blind taste. A lot of times you get confused on its origin because Chardonnay is like a blank canvas. The winemaker can really do whatever they want, but I wanna see if I can identify maybe where, where these are from. Maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. You know, I, I just read a report in 750 about the trends of wine in 2023, and like the last couple years, they keep saying hybrids, and indigenous grapes are gonna become the, the big thing or the big focus, and I think that's cool because grapes Grapes like Chardonnay, old school wines, traditional wines, Bordeaux, Rioja, maybe they're not getting as much love, so you can scoop them up at pretty good prices. The one knock against American Chardonnay is it starts to get pretty expensive because land's expensive, expensive to produce it. A lot of people say you can get great white burgundy at a much lower price, and that's a fair argument, but you know what? Cost is what it is. All of these wines here go from 30 to about 55 bucks, so they're not cheap. These are not generic Chardonnays by any stretch of the imagination, all high quality barrel fermented ones. I am excited. Tasting today out of these Rovsia Burgundy glasses. These are the best inexpensive wine glasses I've ever used. I ordered a set to do the Chardonnay blind tasting last year and I liked it so much that I ordered a second set. They're supposed to be Burgundy glasses but I find they work great for all types of red wines and obviously Chardonnay. I'll drop a link in the description box below. Okay, let's taste some Chardonnay. Do you think there are gonna be some big time differences between these Chardonnays or do you think they're gonna be pretty similar? Wine one, no it's Chardonnay, got the pineapple, the melon. It's not too buttery, not too oaky. There's a hint of creaminess, like a, a sweet peach tape flavor. It's pretty fruity, it's not min more mineral driven, it's more fruit. A little bit of lemon starting to come through. Nice, nice wine so far. Oh, one comes in. Out of the gate swinging, a lot of acidity. Really juicy acidity, really like laser focus. Could it be the Oregon Chardonnay? In Oregon, it's the third most planted grape behind Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris. Out of these four regions, Oregon Chardonnay is the Chardonnay I'm least familiar with professionally, though the ones I've tasted have had this lemony acidity, which I really like. I mean, exceptional wine. I like to start here. Oh, okay, wine number two. Wine two, the oak comes out. Vanilla, it's had a bacon fat. More oak than this one, but the oak's not out of control. Bacon fat, white peach type flavors. Number two is the oakiest. The oak definitely comes out, it's a little bit fat. And what I mean by that, it doesn't have as much juicy acidity as number one, one which I love, the acidity is super racy. Mm, I like one a lot. People like me that love Riesling, love acidity, maybe you're gonna like one. Two, I think it's gonna be more of the general public. You know, acidity can be sharp to a lot of people. It can be quite too sour. That's why it's easy to get red wine drinkers to ease them towards Chardonnay because the acidity is a little softer than other white wines. Yeah, two shows a little bit more wood, it's softer. Barrel fermented Chardonnays are really food friendly wines. Can go with some creamy chicken, chicken and rice type dishes, soup, even pork. I don't know too much about steak. I mean, maybe with aged Chardonnay with some complexities. Ooh, wine three is lemony right out of the gate as well. White peach. These are not all the same vintage, by the way. I mean, it just is what it is. There's a couple vintages off, but what we'll see here. 
This just smells fresh, explosive, maybe even a little bit of white flour, kind of similar to one, maybe just a tad more explosive. Woo! Three has got really racy acidity. It's intense. More mineral driven, less fruity, not a lot of oak at all. My mouth is still watering. I like that a lot. I'm gonna have to go back and see if I like wine three or wine one better. Wine four uh, is a little bit more muted. It's a little bit more shy right now. I gotta shake it out. It's not showing me a ton. Yellow peach. Oh, okay, a little bit of white peppers coming through. Melon. Mm. Wow. The wine was really shy on the nose, but on the palate delivered so much like white peach, lemon, white pineapple, even a little bit of pepper intensity, a spike of flavor, almost like when you bite into something juicy like a fresh pineapple and you get that explosion of flavor. Long finish, I'm still tasting it. Wow, that was really good. <laughs> I gotta go back here and compare wine three and wine one, I'll see which one I like more. I got four here, I just wanna double check because three of these four, three out of these four I really like and it's really close. This is hard. Okay, you ready for the reveal? Okay, we have some beautiful wines here. I think wine one and three could be Oregon, Oregon Santa Barbara E. Uh, maybe four Sonoma, I don't know. Uh, I think two is maybe Napa. I think of Napa Chardonnays usually as being a little bit more fat, a little bit lower in acidity. So I don't know. Are you ready for the reveal? Let's go. Okay, uh, wine number two. I thought wine two is gonna be a crowd pleaser. This is gonna be the easiest for a lot of people to enjoy. The acidity wasn't as big. It, like I said, it was more round, uh, more creamy-ish. Definitely showed a little bit more wood, a little bit more fat, so to speak. Still think it's a very good wine. I mean, 91 points. Uh, I preferred the other three a little bit more. Let's see what this is, shall we? Let's see. <laughs> it is Napa. This is the Duckhorn Napa Valley Chardonnay 2019. Anywhere from 25 to 30 bucks I've seen this. Pretty decent Chardonnay. It's the least expensive out of all these ones. And it showed that because these other three were a step up. All these other three I separated by a half a point. Wine number one here. I'm gonna guess this is either Santa Barbara County or Oregon. It was nice and fruity up front, but that laser sharp lemony acidity, whereas when you had wine three, it was just really lemony. So maybe I'll go with this Santa Barbara County. I'll think that number three is Oregon. Let's see here. Okay, wine one. This is more, as we starting to step into more connoisseur type wine. 93 points, fruit, but the lemony acidity really stood out. I thought it was gorgeous. 93 points, Santa Barbara County, I am right. This is the Samsara Chardonnay Zotovich Vineyards, Santa Rita Hills, 52 bucks, only seven barrels produced. 93 points, super, super serious. Chardonnay, which I absolutely love. Okay, uh, wine three here. I thought it was Oregon. It just has so much lemony acidity. That's what I associate with Oregon Chardonnays. 93 plus points. Excellent wine. Really, really, really good. Uh, let's take a look. I think it's Oregon. It is Oregon! <laughs> this is the 2020 Stoller Family Estate Reserve Chardonnay. Uh, 40 bucks, lemony, one and three, like I said, only have 93, 93 plus, half a point of difference. Just the laser focus of the lemony acidity. This is just beautiful wine, I, stuff that I really wanna drink. Okay, wine number four, this is the winner. Not as lemony as the one and three, but I could, and remember, I said at first the nose was a little bit shy, wasn't giving me everything, but on the palate, it was just like biting into a fresh pineapple, so much explosion of fruit, and the length is really what separated this. This is a surprise, I've never had this wine before. This is the Small Vines Wines, Sonoma Coast Chardonnay 2018. 54 bucks. A lot of the insiders in California pointed me to this wine saying this is a heck of a wine and you know what it is, 94 points. I thought it was outstanding. So tell me, what is your favorite region for American Chardonnay? Have you had any of these? Do you think it stacks up to white burgundy? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot guys. I'll see you soon.